So a common question I get asked from a lot of soccer trainers in this industry is, Leo, how do I better structure my small group training sessions? So if you're, you're a small group training specialist, this video is going to be for you. Because uh, in this video, I'm going to talk to you a bit about how to better structure your sessions, how to run your sessions, how to keep players uh, more engaged during your sessions so that you can have more success with the clients that you're working with and you can build a more solid uh, foundation for your business. So stay watching, enjoy the video. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all my latest content. So today I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of how I run my small group training sessions. Uh, this is something that I get asked on a regular basis when I speak with coaches who want to learn a little bit more about how to run a successful small group training session. So as well as helping coaches with their business, uh, something that I'm very passionate about is helping coaches run successful training sessions. A couple of coaches I'm working with, uh, this is something that I specialize with them, helping them develop uh, training curriculums so they can implement them into, the, into your business. So if this is something you're interested in, uh, improving your player development experience, then that's something I can help you with. Reach out to me. Uh, you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me in the link below. So... For those who aren't too familiar about my, my uh, small group sessions, when I talk about small groups, I talk about anywhere between six to eight players. Uh, eight players being max, six being minimum. That for me is a really good uh, small group. And the reason why I like to keep those numbers is because it, it can create either a 3v3 or a 4v4 uh, scenario where you can kind of touch on specific areas of the game which are quite game realistic. So in a 4v4, okay, you can really, really work on some, some tactical work with those players, okay? Because you can work on defending, you can work on attacking, you can work on, on transition uh, from defense to attack, right? So I'm not going to get into too much specific, but that's the reason why I like to keep it anywhere between six to eight, eight players. So the way I structure my sessions, all my sessions are an hour long, okay? And in that sessions, I, in, in those hour long sessions, I like to break it down uh, step by step. So I like to break it down. First, we'll start off with a technical training slash warm up. Then from there, we move into a skill development uh, phase. And then the last half an hour is a combination of a conditioned game plus a normal game. Okay, so I'll go into a little bit more detail of what essentially this, this looks like and the reason why I, I structure it this way. Now, something I want you to be very clear on is that when I run my sessions, and this is something I want you to, to do as well, it's really important that when you're working in groups, right, you're very strict and you're very on point with the transition from one, one, one section of the session to the other. So if you're moving into from the technical phase of your session into more of a skill development where now players are under pressure, okay, what I tend to do is when I'm setting up, and this is one of the reasons why I like to get to sessions early so i'll be the, i'll be at a session anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes before the session actually starts because i like to have everything set up ready for them when the players are in the sessions i don't have to move much i can focus more on the coaching rather than having to sit up and waste time uh, waste valuable time uh, during the sessions so i tend to always arrive early if I can, right, I'd probably be at a session 20 to 30 minutes before sitting up. Some people might be thinking that's ridiculous, but that's just the way I am. Because when I'm sitting up, I always get new ideas into my head. I'm like, right, okay, do you know what? I want to change this or I want to change that. And I always have a session plan with me, okay? So the same way that I always write notes down when I speak with coaches and or when I come up with ideas for my business or when I help coaches with their business, right? It's the same way 
I approach my training sessions. Okay, so my training sessions, I always like to have a training plan that I follow, whether it be one-to-one -one training or group, right? I don't like to show up and just wing it. I think it's very unprofessional and you're doing a disservice to the clients who are paying you for your training session, right? So first one, arrive early. Second, always make sure that you have a training plan or a training class or a training lesson, however you want to call it. I call it training plan so that you can follow it step by step during the session. Okay, so what I like to do is the first 15 minutes, I always do ball mastery. So if I'm working with six to eight players, I always like my my first 15 minutes to be with a ball at the feet. Okay, I don't do laps. I don't do sprints. I don't do any of that. I always like it. The, the first 15 minutes to be intense, lots of touches, lots of turns, acceleration with the ball, uh, changing direction, uh, lots of touches, just making it non-stop for 15 minutes. And essentially what I found is that works with the players that I'm working with and that helps them not only to warm up, but to get extra touches and prepare for the session uh, coming up, right? So from the technical session, we technical uh, section of the session I then like to transition into a skill development so the skill development essentially essentially is the the part of the session where we're going to be working on so if you're working on passing during that session then this is where it's going to be passing but under pressure if you're working on shooting it's going to be shooting but under pressure so where the technical or ball mastery first 15 minutes is under with no pressure, okay, each player with their own ball. Now, the next 15 minutes is with pressure. So if I'm working on passing, then I might do a session where we have reduced groups. So it might be if I'm working with six players, it might be a 3v3. And essentially, every two passes is one goal or before they can go, they can score, or they can play into a zone, they must complete X amount of passes, okay? This is just to get the players now un uh, working under pressure, okay? Because you've got to remember, if your session is an hour long, you want to try and get those players to still work on the technical side of the game, but now put a little bit more pressure on them. So we'll go from the technical into now the skill development, which is another 15 minutes. So essentially that's 30 minutes of the session. That's already done. Now, the next 15 minutes, I will then move into a conditioned game. So a conditioned game is similar to a normal one, but there's a condition. So if you are working in a 4v4, you might have two goalkeepers and three outfield players. So it's 3v3 outfield with a goal with a goalkeeper on each team now it a, a very simple example to keep it very simple you might do every player needs to touch the ball once before you can score a goal or you must play out from the back before scoring okay so you do you set the condition for your players to achieve before the outcome which is scoring a goal or having a shot on goal okay so what I normally do is the 15 minutes after, so that takes us to about 45 minutes already of the session. It's the condition game. Uh, I normally have different variations of the condition. So each player touches the ball once, could be one, or you can only score from a first time finish. That's another variation. So I tend to, to change the variation every five to seven minutes so that it keeps players uh, engaged and it keeps them on their toes uh, and it keeps them working on different scenarios now the, the 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 final 15 minutes okay what i normally do is i let them play a normal game for 10 minutes and then the last five minutes we do an analysis of the session so what my players always do is i get them to bring in a journal so each player gets a journal when they join the academy and even if it's one-to-one, -one, even if it's small groups, they have to bring, it's a requirement that they bring their journals to the session. 
So five minutes before the end of the session, we sit down, each player gets their pen out, gets their notebook out, and they, we write down an analysis on what we did in that session. Now, the purpose behind this is for them to understand what they worked on, to understand how this session uh, transitions into a real game scenario. And also, it's a way of parents knowing what their kids are working on. Okay, Because when they get home, mom or dad might want to have a look at the journal and see, right, what, what, did, what did little Johnny do today with Coach Leo? Okay, I can see they worked on passing, or I can see they worked on finishing, or I can see they worked on a, a different area of the game. Okay, so that's a very simple way how I structure my small group training sessions. Okay, so it's essentially four blocks of 15. And with the last five minutes of the fourth block, a session review or a session analysis where we sit down as a group and we make note and I get them to write down three things they worked on today, three things they learned today, and three goals that they want to achieve before our next training session, okay? So if you need more help with this, reach out to me. The link is in the description of this video below. You can book a call. Like I said, I do work with coaches on curriculum development, so that's something that I'm very passionate about. If this is something you want, need or want more help with, we can sit down and I can work with you on structuring your tra a training plan or a training program for your business. Okay, thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content.